What's standard up? Stock, you should seven stop opening. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another video. Oh, yeah. And today we're going to be talking about Sekiro, the uh, the Souls game, or the FromSoft game, whatever. It's uh, not Souls a Souls born game. Ekiro. Souls, 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 Souls Bekiro. Souls born Ekiro. Because you got to have Dark Souls Bloodborne. Yeah. And Sekiro. Souls born Ekiro ring. Because <laughs> you got to include Elden Ring, which is coming out. Elden up. Souls born Ekiro. There we go. Perfect. <laughs> So yeah, we're going to be talking about Sekiro's Shadows Die Twice, and uh, our review of it, because uh, if you've seen our channel, we are pretty big Souls fans. We played every single Souls game besides Demon Souls. Yeah. Every single one we played. Bloodborne, Dark Souls 1, Dark Souls 2, Dark Souls 3, East, and yeah. Sekiro, and then Elden Ring, which as the time of recording this comes out in a few weeks. So yeah, we're really excited for it. So... We're, we thought we'd make a review of Sekiro, the the last Souls game before Elden Ring. So, let's get into it. So, what do we what do we want to talk about first? Our general thoughts, or um, uh, yeah, I guess I guess we can get into the. We should talk about the gameplay or something. Okay, yeah. So the general thoughts of the gameplay so far for me are that it's actually it's really good, and I really like how different it is. That's what I really mm-hmm. like. I like that they took a different approach to combat. They still had it difficult, and I like how it was more rhythm oriented. Yeah, and I just I thought it was really fun. Yeah, so I just finished the game recently, mm-hmm. and um, yeah, it's really good. And something that I think Dark Souls fans will appreciate is that the gameplay is different in a lot of ways than Blood, than Dark Souls or Bloodborne, mm-hmm. and your skills will transfer to some degree, but you'll still have to relearn the new combat system. Um, and I think that's that will make it so that a lot of people who have gotten used to the combat system, they don't have as much hard a, as hard as a time as they used to with the other FromSoft games. Like if you've played Dark Souls three and then you go play Dark Souls one or two, it's gonna seem really easy. Um, and so if you play Sekudo, it will challenge you a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I definitely really appreciated that, and I like how it was more of the. Uh deflect system it was it was more about getting rid of your enemy's posture than killing your enemy yeah i like that too which is yeah filling up the little bar above their heads it's a more original take from the other games no rolling of course i like rolling but i also like this this combat system mixing it up yeah it was really nice and they had the different prosthetics and stuff which were a cool mix up to add in and uh oh if you jump you have the like you can or for lightning attacks you could jump and reflect it back and then they had like the special move I forget what the heck that slot was called, but you still have like the special move. Oh yeah. Press both bump, uh, both bumpers at the same time. You do that attack, and <clears throat> oh no, I thought it was just really fluid and smooth, and uh, again, it was more rhythm based, where you had to time the rhythm of the attacks. Yeah. Like, it was definitely in that in Dark Souls, but the attacks in this game are really fast. We have to like deflect. It's like a rhythm game mm-hmm. more than the other Dark Souls games. So I definitely liked how it was pretty speedy and fast, and it was really satisfying as well to finally yeah. nail the combat down and beat the bosses. And you can do jumping and and dodging and stuff, and there's like maybe some iframes, but it's not the ideal strategy for most bosses. No, yeah, for most bosses they encourage you to deflect, otherwise you're screwed. So, I definitely appreciated that different take for the combat. Now, the world itself is pretty similar to most Souls games, Eh. but... There's one big well, difference, and that it's you really get to choose where you go, like halfway through the game. Well, I mean, if you mean in terms of like lore world, that kind of thing, it's totally different. No, yeah, in terms of lore world, yeah, definitely. Yeah. But it just they lay out but the like world, the, the game design, the open world, that kind of thing, like level design. Mm-hmm. It is pretty similar. Yeah, besides the fact that you can, like halfway through, you get to choose whichever route you want. Yeah, which I guess well, is you can kind do stuff in... like that in the other Dark Souls games. Yeah, too. but I guess just not to that degree. Yeah, of like, oh, you get to you either you choose different areas and stuff, but I, which I definitely liked, and uh, interconnected level design was also pretty great. It wasn't as interconnected as Dark Souls three and one and two, just yeah. as any of the Souls games in Bloodborne. Yeah, it wasn't but as it was interconnected, pretty, but it's still pretty good. It was still pretty good, and it definitely felt real and yeah. not really fake. The grapple hook yeah. was fun. The only really moment where I was like, dang, that was pretty cool in the level design, like in terms of interconnected with, was in interconnectedness, was when you go up to the Ashina Castle top and then you can go in, like, you know that wall where you can go flip it and then mm-hmm. you go into the shrine area? Yeah, that one was pretty cool. But, um, yeah, the lore, all right, yeah, we'll get into the lore and the story. So the way the story works is pretty atypical for FromSoft because it actually has cutscenes and you know what's going on. Mm hmm. 
it's still there are still some souls type elements where it's like okay yeah the lore is hidden in item descriptions and things yeah. like that you don't really always like have a clear idea of what like why exactly this little this like why this piece this. of whatever you need to do something does that yeah but at the end of the day you do know what the outcome is yeah so it was kind of nice seeing souls take a different approach to that because i'm super used to the look it up later <laughs> type yeah. thing um and the, as for the story itself it was fine it wasn't yeah. it didn't really stand out as an amazing story but it wasn't particularly bad either it was just kind of there I think they did a good job of implementing it so that if you just want the gameplay, you don't have to really worry about it that much. Yeah, and there was a little... I think they... Yeah, it was good enough to the point where I was like, okay, I could be kind of invested, yeah. but it wasn't... I liked like, the... Whatever... The Imperial Child. What's he called? Divine Kuro. Hair, right? Oh, yeah. The Divine, Divine Hair. Hair. Kuro, yeah. Not Kuro. I don't know. But whatever, yeah. yeah. It's, it's Kuro. Yeah, yeah. He, was, um, he was good, and the main character definitely has like, oh, it's interesting. It was like, well, what's his past? It's mm-hmm. like that. He feels ashamed. He loses his arm and stuff like that. And so, yeah, I thought the story was good enough when it was there to keep me invested, but it was also not something that keeps you barred from the gameplay where you have no idea where what's going on. Yeah, Cause and there's no, like, you don't have to, like, sit there and read dialogues for a billion hours like crappy yeah, RPGs. Yeah, you could skip out all of it, pretty mm-hmm. much. And uh, it also did uh, help give some context to why we were fighting bosses, because in the Dark Souls series... I'm just going around killing people. I don't mm-hmm. really know why I'm doing it. I mean, yeah, I'm linking the fire and stuff. I mean, obviously, I know the Dark Souls. Yeah, because we've read the lore. Because we've read, we've read into it. But still, just at, your, at face value, I'm not like, oh, yes, the mm-hmm. classic character, yeah. Vort of the Poor Real Valley. <laughs> Whereas it's like, oh, it's Genichiro. Okay, yeah, yeah he, I've met him before. I like I've seen they, him and stuff. They they can talk to you in the battle sometimes. They do that in Dark Souls as well, but since it, very, it very, makes little. very little. But it, they do it a lot more in in, uh, in Sekiro. Mm-hmm. Like, you and you can hear interesting dialogue, I guess. And you again, you've known, you know, actually a lot of these characters that you fight, <laughs> especially if you get the uh, bad ending because you literally kill Ishin and uh, Emma, the healer. So. Yeah. Um, what else? I guess we better talk about the main. Oh wait, we drop. forgot to oh. mention it's set in feudal Japan as well. Oh yeah, the setting's completely which, different. The setting is a lot different, and I think it was a nice change of pace. Yeah, I definitely like that too. It's nice to yeah. see a feudal Japan, something that isn't medieval or like. Gothic, blah, 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 Lovecraftian, yeah. as you Bloodborne <laughs> fans like to say. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was kind of nice to see it like these uh, uh, samurais. And I, I do kind of wish we had gotten a little bit more like Oni demon esque kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, I was fine yeah, with was, what we had. It was good. still it was still interesting and stuff. So um, I guess let's talk about the main draw of the Soul series, which is the bosses. Well, at least up, for um, us, for us, yeah, obviously, some people. Might not, but just fine for them. But, yep, the bosses. So the bosses in this game are pretty good. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> there are some really good ones, like Ishin and the Owl Father and Owl. Regular Owl is pretty good. Genichiro, first time, is pretty good as well. Uh, I did like the horse one as well. Divine Dragon was pretty cool. He wasn't that difficult at all, but yeah. he was still a pretty cool boss. And at the end of the day, I think the bosses were pretty good. There weren't really many that I found mm-hmm. to be extremely annoying. And if there were, they were completely optional. Which which ones? Headless like, and the Sichu Men Warrior. Those are oh, two yeah. really terrible yeah, bosses, but those, they're, completely they're completely optional. They're optional, so it's fine. So it's fine. I'm okay with that. And <laughs> yeah, I, I think this is a really good. I'm and really also, glad. There's no. Well, we'll talk about areas later, but yeah, um, yeah. There, there there's a lot of great bosses, but on the other hand, there wasn't any bosses where I was like. This is amazing. This is gonna. This is one of my favorite Souls bosses. This rivals Gale Medir. Yeah, uh, like I don't my know. Favorite, any of the my favorite. My favorite in the game was Ishin. Um, what what mm. was yours? Ishin, he's up there. I fought him so much that to the point where I don't know. Maybe it's just like oh, I want something new. I kind of really like Owl Father. I yeah. really like him. He's a lot of fun. But Ishin and Owl Father are really close. Yeah, so those two are, are my favorites as well. Those two are definitely my favorites and. But, I thought uh, Al Father was the most difficult one. For yeah. Me. Now this is the thing. A lot of people like to say, "Oh, Ishin's like one of the best Souls bosses." But to be honest, I never really felt that. Like he never really did anything where I was like, "Oh my gosh, this is a really cool spectacle yeah. and fun, amazing fight." I mean, he's certainly fun and really stuff like that. But I never really felt like, "Oh, he's like Gale or Medir or the Abyss Watchers." 
Yeah. Or just uh, Dark Souls three Orphan. bosses. <laughs> yeah, just Dark Souls three bosses in general. But no, Orphan of Cause. Oh yeah, and, yeah. Uh, or uh, he kind of reminds me of Lady Maria. Yeah, I he think. does. He like a, a pretty good Maria. boss, but it doesn't really stand out as one of the greatest of all time. No, yeah, and I do definitely think that this game still is. I'm glad that this game toned down a lot of annoying elements. Oh yeah, it's not. The it's not a very annoying game, which no, I yeah. like a lot. It's not very annoying, and they removed a lot of the annoying elements from Souls games. Like, there's no stamina mar- bar, so if you want to run, have at it. And, yeah. Uh, I I also really like that the bosses, because, again, I feel like with Souls, the bosses typically get better with each game. Mm-hmm. And I'm glad that they're still on this path of, okay, let's make good bosses, because it gives me hope for Elden yeah. Ring. I think the average boss quality is really good. Probably not as high as Dark Souls 3, Mm-mm. but there's not any frustrating bosses, really. Yeah, so I'm glad that they're, I'd say overall FromSoft is improving in their boss overall average boss quality yeah um and well i think some people don't like the demon of hatred like you're mm. not a huge fan of him right i'm not a huge fan i hated him at first but now i'm just like yeah. he's okay but i, I, really I thought him. he was all right i kind of liked him yeah but um yeah the the and another thing is that in just in general annoying stuff is removed so like annoying mm-hmm. areas there's no well there's a tiny poison area but it's not it's, it's so not, tiny doesn't and really with matter. the grapple hook and sp- unlimited sprint it's really not that difficult to avoid yeah oh another thing is like there's no encumbrance Mm-mm. no armor holding you down making you slower no, or anything yeah. like that which i like mm-hmm. that is some people see that as a drawback oh no character creator and no customizing of weapons and stuff but i, I think thought it, that was fine. i think it depends i think it's fine for this game to be like that but I wouldn't want every Souls game forever to be like that. Because yeah, exactly. I do like... I like that extra customization. But I think this was a fun change of pace as well. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, going on to the areas. We already talked about kind of the area design and stuff. But now in terms of just annoying areas and stuff like that. Yeah, like we said, they're not really there. Mm-hmm. There were none where I was like, oh, man, this is a complete... Like, in all the Dark Souls games, there was like one area or a few areas where I was like, oh, wow, this is such a cool area and unique and whoa, it's really cool and yeah crazy like, i really uh, like fountainhead palace that was my favorite that one. one was definitely my favorite that one was one yeah of the, that was a really great one but i wouldn't I, mean, I would say it's pretty good but i wouldn't say it's like in my top five souls areas or something no like yeah because like but it was really for, good because like in dark souls one and dark souls three and some parts of dark souls two i would be like oh my gosh this area is so cool and like oh you're going from like tree mm-hmm. areas to these crystal caverns yeah. to this ice palace like and yeah even even dark ducks. souls 2 what's that the one in the dlc that's really good that one area what was that which the the snow one or the uh iron the iron, iron one yeah the iron yeah one. I'm cute. either way that one's really cool it's like a giant smokestack and you gotta walk across these chains yeah and it's the one with what is that the night guy who's uh i can't remember ivory king uh no it was the other one not ivory king the mm. other dlc i don't know we'll put it on screen yeah. later uh well but you'll you'll know what we're talking about when you see the image and stuff but anyway uh yeah i never really felt like there was that because i was just kind of going from mm-hmm. one area it felt more like bloodborne but it was definitely better than bloodborne in my opinion with areas and for sure i think bloodborne has better designed areas mm-hmm. um but sekido has more like visually interesting areas i think um, definitely and well fountainhead palace and they're also quite linear the areas mm-hmm. in Sekiro I would say that's one of the drawbacks is that Dark Souls the Dark Souls games have a lot more dynamic areas yeah and out, outside of fountainhead palace I didn't really like I didn't really like any of the areas like I liked them all I liked them all but none of them stood out that much except for fountainhead mm-hmm. palace no yeah exactly I was just going through them mm-hmm. and so um yeah, oh, we, we should talk else? about the mini bosses. Oh yeah, the mini bosses. The mini bosses were also good. Uh, there was none of them that I'm like, oh man, that's a really memorable mini boss. But they mm-hmm. were all, they were all good enough. Some of them were like a bit, like a bit Some of them were BS. A bit repetitive. Like what? What is the, the seven spears? The second oh, one. Oh yeah, that geez, is, seven that is spears terrible. is so tough. Holy crap! Uh, that second one where they put you against him and the general. That's just retarded. Mm-hmm. Like I, I used. Uh, some invisibility thing to backstab them because ain't no way I'm doing that. Yeah, no. That's just unfair. But most of the mini-bosses are generally pretty good. Mm-hmm. But, uh... And, again, most of the annoying ones you could just completely avoid, so... Yeah. And we should talk about the replayability because that's one of the big drawbacks. Yeah, of one of game. the big drawbacks of this game compared to Souls is replayability. I played through Dark Souls 3 ten times. 
the other ones I haven't played through as much, but I played through Bloodborne uh, twice. And Sekido, I've only played through like three times. Now, I've had Sekido longer than Bloodborne, so it makes sense why I would play Mm -hmm. it, but I've played Dark Souls 3 way, 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 way many times, way more times than Sekido. And I have the urge to go and play Dark Souls 3 right now because I feel like I have stuff left to do. But in Sekido, I feel like I've done everything. Mm -hmm. It's And there's, yeah, there's not a whole lot of customization. There's no builds. Like, I guess you maybe, they're kind of, not much though. But yeah, it's like those prosthetics, I guess. But really, it, I don't think that has a huge impact. It's not like it's not the same as a soul, mage, as build, a mage yeah. versus a sword, or even even in Dark Souls, like the different kinds of melee weapons. Strength you can versus have like dexterity. you can have like yeah, you can have strength versus dexterity. You can have a really heavy, large weapon, and then you have to change your whole build based around your weapon if you're you doing that. Or you can have like those daggers. What are the really good daggers? What's their name? Uh, the soul sword. Like, uh, this, that one. <laughs> what you were called? The twin blades. Twin Cell sword. Bl- yes. Twin blades. Cell sword. Really twin, twin blades. Like if you use a lighter weapon, you can base your class around that. And there's a lot you can do. Exactly. Strength versus dexterity. Mm-hmm. And yeah, and there's all those. There's all those different stats too. Like, like your how much I don't know Magic, the names. I don't faith, remember. But, intelligence. Yeah. And all those crazy. And things. Th- you can do a ton of different play styles with that. But you can't really do that in Sekudo at all. No, yeah, you could really only just change your prosthetics and one ability. Besides mm-hmm. that, your base kit is the same throughout the entire game. So, yeah. now let's get into our general overall thoughts. So, we think the game is really good. We mm-hmm. really enjoyed our the, our time. We think it's I think it's a really, really solid game. Mm-hmm. That's really good and probably one of the best games to come out of our of the most recent years. Yeah. Because it just, I'll, I'm glad it won Game of the Year. I definitely think it deserved it for that year. And uh, yeah, we think it's just a really solid game. Now, ranking it among the Souls games. So mine would go Dark Souls 3, Dark Souls 1, Sekido, and then eh, Bloodborne Dark Souls uh, 2 kind of down there after Sekido. Yeah, I, I would know, yeah. I would be pretty much, well, I would say Dark Souls 1, Dark Souls 3, and then Sekido. Keep in mind, those top three are all really close. Like, those are all really great games. Oh, yeah. And of course... Bloodborne and Dark Souls 2 are both good games, but they're not as good as those other three. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, that's all we have to say about Sekido. Let us know what you thought about Sekido down in the comments below. Make sure to like, subscribe for more, and yeah, that's it. Thank you for watching. Thank you. Bye. Bye.